Hey guys, how's it going? Jam here, and welcome to another track build battle. In today's episode, I'm going to be putting two of the most common cars on the UK roads, at least, uh, against each other. Starting with this lovely, f well, depends what you like. Um, <laughs> we're starting with this Ford Fiesta, which, as you can see, it's got the nice uh, WRC Castrol Edge paint job, which is, you know, pretty nice paint job. That's probably the main thing I do like about this car. I'm not typically a fan of these sorts of cars um, in general. It's definitely not on Forza and definitely not in A-Class and rear-wheel drive, but they are what they are and we must, well I was going to say thank, but um, I don't think thank is the right word. We must acknowledge Chris, also known as Invisibleek, for the suggestion to do this head-to-head, -head, so that uh, gratitude should be on screen well again I tried to say it again and I? I said gratitude I'm not grateful at all these cars are horrible anyway <laughs> that, that's on screen now so you know there's Chris's suggestion I've done it I'm not saying thank you for it but there we go anyway um yes onto the car back or back onto the car I, I've already voiced my displeasure so I'll try and keep um other negative opinions to a minimum in this video and I'll just start talking about the facts and the facts is that these cars just aren't very good um in, in A class with rear wheel drive and with these rules, they're not going to be in C class, maybe D class, maybe even B class. You know, front wheel drive, get all the power out, don't put the crappy aero on it. Might be quite good fun, especially with a you know lot lot of lot of grip front wheel drive cars. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm waffling. In in this spec, they're not very good. Um, they've got six. Well, this this Fiesta has got 6.5 speed, which is a little bit down on a lot we've seen recently. Uh, it's hitting about 151 mile an hour down this main straight, which isn't the slowest we've had, but as I discussed, I think in the last episode, it's not quite as impressive as I perhaps would have thought it was at an earlier date. 5.6 handling is okay, but the actual handling of the car was quite poor. Um, so yeah, the stat is, is alright for the series, but on track when it, the way it handles is just not great and that's going to be largely down to the fact that it only gets two three fives both front and rear for the tyre widths um, so yeah not exactly very big tyres at all and again that's just because it's a front wheel drive sort of car um, acceleration wise 8.5 it's a little bit down on this series but you know 151 mile an hour is biggest acceleration straight linking with the top speed which I said wasn't impressive but 151 isn't too bad so take from that what you will uh, the most impressive stat on this car is the 5.7 braking, which is pretty damn average. Well, it, it's average for a good car in the series. It's the same as both of the Porsches that went last time out. And, uh, yes. But, again, in-game, I didn't really feel that. I didn't think the brakes were that good. Um, especially into Turn 1, a lot of cars only did a little dab on the brakes if... well, a little dab of the brakes, then you throw it in into, say, into 130R, but this car... It, it felt like I was on the brakes longer. Maybe it wasn't the brakes' fault. Maybe it just needed to slow down more to get around the corner because it hasn't got the high-speed downforce, and it definitely doesn't have the high-speed stability due to the fact these cars, well, this, this, well, yeah, these cars both. So the other one was the same. Through these high-speed corners, they just weren't very stable. They haven't got enough generated downforce, and the wheelbase just isn't big enough to spread that load. And I, I don't know what it is, but I know that, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a technical geek with these sorts of things, but I know that the small wheelbase and lots of grip is not helping because it was also rather twitchy but then because it's got a lot of um, well very small tyres it, it's also quite understeery so all in all it wasn't a very nice car to drive but I'll finish off the rest of the stats for you as uh, I'm going to cut it short at the end of this lap this week and just keep it to three laps for this opening gambit um, so yeah it's got under 420 horsepower which isn't too bad it's slightly less than the 944 from last week but a lot less than the 928 only weighs 2,600 pounds, which is quite light, but not as light as you'd expect with such a small city car. That's t all today's these, all the uh, safety features and technology and stuff that you get in cars these days, contributing to the fact that it should be probably a lot lighter than that. Um, yeah, and that's that is all the stats for this car. And I, I'm cutting it slightly shorter this week. Sometimes I do three laps. Sometimes I do four laps for this opening thing. Depends how much I've got to say about the car, really. And well, I've already said that I don't like this car, so I haven't got much more to say. So I don't think I've missed anything, so we'll cut it off there and go and move over to its rival, the Vauxhall Corsa, which is even smaller and even twitchier.
So now we move on to the second car in today's episode, the Vauxhall Corsa, with once again a rather nice paint job that I picked off of the storefront, looking very similar to some of the Opals, but as you can definitely tell, that is definitely Vauxhall Motorsport. Um, anyway, yeah, the paint isn't too relevant in this series, but I thought I'd mention it because I do get all, of, well, most of my paints off of the storefront, um, off of completely random people that I have no idea, they're normally just one of the recommended ones. And they're normally quite good, so I just just thought I'd give a shout out to all the generic people or whoever it is that I'm stealing these paints off. Well, not stealing, is it? They should. Anyway, I'm waffling again, so let's get into the statistics, and I'm going to do it backwards this time because why the hell not? So we're going to start with the braking of the Vauxhall Corsa at 5.7, and I don't really have much to say about that apart from the fact that it's exactly the same as the Ford Fiesta. So on to acceleration with 8.5, and it's exactly the same story exactly the same as the Ford Fiesta. And I've done it differently because those two are boring, but the next two are actually a little bit interesting because the stats are now a little bit different. The Corsa has only 5.5, and I say only because the Fiesta has a whopping 5.6. So the Corsa a little bit down in terms of handling, and that could be because even though it has slightly bigger tyres than the Fiesta, the Corsa has two 4.5s all round compared to the Fiesta's two 3.5s, it is quite a bit heavier. It weighs about 2,760 pounds, which is about, I can't even read my own handwriting, 120 pounds heavier than the Ford Fiesta. Though to compensate from that, it does have more power and more torque. It's got 432 horsepower, which is 15 more than the Fiesta, and 389 foot-pounds of torque, which is 14 more than the Fiesta. However, that extra power and torque cannot help the car to a higher top speed, as it only has 6.4. Again, that isn't necessarily the most representative or helpful stat, that's the word I was looking for, because down this straight we have another stat that I like to bring out, and that is the fact that this car was doing 150 occasionally 151 miles an hour, so it is just that little bit down on the Ford Fiesta, but not necessarily significantly so. And also, yes, as you have, will have just seen, this car did like drifting. This car... Well, I've already said all the bad things about the Fiesta, mainly the fact that it's just not very stable at high speed and it has lots of understeer. Well, this car had the same of those. You'll have seen earlier this lap that I went for quite a bit drift, just because the... Um, uh, it was, was not stable through the high-speed corner. And on the first lap, you would have seen me go wide at the very same corner, at the very first corner of this bit of footage, because it had understeer. But this car had a few other problems as well. Because of the wheelbase being much smaller, and it's got more grip as well through the bigger tyres, and it's heavier, so it's pushing it down onto the tyres more, at least that's how I understand it, um, it made it even twitchier. Even twitchier. Which was... Oh, a pain in the ass to deal with, to put it lightly. And also, 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 and this was the most annoying thing, it hated the kerbs. And it wasn't in general. It wasn't every time I went on any kerb. It was some of the kerbs, some of the time. And sometimes it just bit me. It just like, bite, snap, twitch, go. It was horrific. Really hated this car. But anyway, there is one more thing I've got to mention about both cars that I meant to bring up about the Fiesta. I was surprised to see that both of these cars managed to get to the top of A-Class with their stock engine and their stock aspiration, or lack thereof, I believe, in the case of the Corsa. I can't actually remember, I should have double-checked it. But anyway, neither of them got an engine swap, and neither of them have a additional or changed um, aspiration. However, the Vauxhall Corsa could only get to, I think it was 697 PI. And for the sake of 3 PI, I wasn't going to go and stick in a turbo, big or different turbocharger or supercharger or change the engine or whatever. So, the Vauxhall Corsa has become the very first car in the series. That's what I was talking about. Don't know what happened there. Car completely snapped on me. Grr. I really don't like these cars. Yes, as I was saying, the Vauxhall Corsa has become the very first car in the series to get a rim change. It's on a different set of wheels that were quite a bit lighter than the originals, just to make up that last few PI, and I did think it was worth a mention. But, I've been trying not to ramble on quite so much lately, I always try and I always fail, but I am going to cut it off at the end of this lap, so it should hopefully be ever so slightly shorter than the equivalent episodes that do four laps per car for the introduction to them. So that is it for this part of the video. I'll be back shortly when we'll be seeing which one of these common cars is quickest.
So now we move on to the probably not very fast laps, the fastest that each of these cars could muster. We know that the Fiesta might have a little bit of an advantage with a higher top speed going into turn one, but through said corner it's the Vauxhall that uses a little bit more of the track that the car has available. The Fiesta could have uh, ran out wide a little bit, perhaps carried a little bit more speed through there, but they are very neck and neck at the moment down through the very tricky turn three. The Fiesta looked pretty smooth, the course had a little bit of a wobble, and I think that might have enabled the Fiesta to just sneak ever so slightly ahead, though it doesn't take as much entry curb into the first Egna, both using it on the outside between them, and both using quite a bit of exit curb out of the second Egna as well, as pretty much every car in this series has done, bar a far, uh, very select few. Into the hairpin, let's see what the lines are like, both are very tight on the way in. The course running out a little bit wider to carry momentum, the Fiesta Kicking up a bit of smoke on the exit into the alternate chicane, and I must say, with how small the wheelbases were, these were quite nippy, annoyingly twitchy, but nice and nippy cars. They were both very nice through the alternate chicane um, due to, say, you know, agility. So we go down into the final corner, and I think it is the Fiesta that is still slightly ahead. The Vauxhall running slightly wide, but the Fiesta kicking up some smoke there. Not quite sure what that was from. Both of them correcting and having to sort of muscle car into a straight line. The Fiesta was using a bit of exit curb on the fo out of the spoon. So it's a drag race to the line. They're still neck and neck. And that was really, really close. We've had a few close episodes, but this has been the closest yet. While, yes, they were close, unfortunately, they weren't very fast. The Fiesta setting the slowest time so far, although only marginally behind the C63 Black Series. And I must admit, I'm quite surprised to see the C63 that low down. I thought my... It's quite a decent car, I quite like it, thought it'd be do better. I'm also just going to point out, I didn't realise so many cars had beaten the Aston Martin Vantage, which was the spe uh, the target car. But speaking of beating cars, it was the Vauxhall Corsa that would beat out the Fiesta, but not by much. Just 11 thousandths of a second faster, or 1.1 hundredths, whichever way you would prefer. And so yeah, we've got three cars. They Admittedly, they're the slowest three cars, but... Boy, they are really, really close. But anyway, that is it for this episode. If you've got any suggestions for future cars, leave them in the comments. But until the next one, um, yeah, goodbye, I suppose. Bye.